Hello, everybody. It's the interview queen, Alicia Atu here, and I am beyond psyched to be hosting interview round three with Tama Tonga. Hello. Oh, oh, baby. Three, three, three. I'm back. What's up? How you doing? Thank you for having me, first of all. Thank you for coming back on. You're one of those guests I always love seeing. Of course, we can't do it in person this time, but we are making it work. We're back. How are you? I'm very good. Uh, You know, the world right now is a little crazy, but hey. About time they joined my craziness, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if the world's quite on your level of crazy, but who knows? Right. Give us a couple weeks. We might hit it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> so what's Before good? We, what's been happening? I mean, one of the things that I definitely want to jump into is the little <laughs> island you've got going on. But before we do, since we are talking about things going on the, in the world, what are you doing day to day to kind of keep yourself occupied and not hit that level of boredom that a lot of people have? Um, man. So, you know, I'm sweating. I just got, I just was rushing around the house here. It's hot. Uh, I've been working out. I wake up, I make sure I just, I have two kids, one that's entered his, into his twos, which is, uh, the terrible twos. That's so true. All right. So he's (laughs) running crazy. And, uh, I got, I got a a two month year old. And, um, so I, I deal with them and then I, I try to get in my, my workout, got to stay fit, got to be ready when, when we get that call to go back, you know, so, of course. and then, you know, I've been working on projects, uh, like the Thomas Island podcast projects. Yes. It seems like one of the ways that you've been working out is actually posting some dancing videos on TikTok. And every time one of these come up, I'm like, when are we getting a full bullet club <laughs> choreographed ensemble? Because I think, I think it's what the internet needs. Yes. Yes, I know. You know what? I've been lacking on it, uh, but I've been putting the workouts and the dancing just to kind of like uh, uplift the the mood of the world, you know, just to kind of show some um, silliness in, in the midst of, of this craziness going on. Just to, hey, keep the keep the, the light out there in the world, you know? That's something we can always count on you for. I feel like regardless of the scenario, you always have a smile on your face. You always make the best of stuff. And one of those things I feel has kind of been a silver lining in everything going on is Thomas Island, this brand new podcast that you have. It is amazing. I love checking it out. There's Patreon tied into it, which we will get into. Uh, But I was wondering, the whole reason for creating this podcast, do you feel like it was out of necessity? Was it out of boredom? Was it out of just wanting to do something else while you had the time? I'll tell you the truth. Uh, this is how it started. Um, you, you obviously, you know, the because of the situation with the world, we had to cancel our um, our beach party here in Tampa. And so in the midst of doing the refunds, a lot of fans gave us their refund. They didn't want their refunds back. And I just felt so um, I was so grateful for that, that uh, I hit up my partner and I said, hey, hit them all up write them let's all meet up on the zoom and i just wanted to thank them personally on on zoom recording and that became it, we had so much fun just chatting that we did it again the week after that and a week after that and it just kind of rolled into snowballed into this thomas island and we just it's a hangout it's a podcast they they shot questions about my career, about me, my personal life, my, and I'm, I'm open, I'm open book about it. You know, I don't have nothing to hide yet that I've, that, that I've <laughs> but, but, um, yeah, so it, you know, it, it, it's a situation in the world. And I just felt I was just, uh, bringing a little light, you know, so that's how Thomas Island was born. I feel like one of the best things about being able to connect with your fans is not only seeing that respect and love and fandom they have for you, but also the way that it humbles you. And you've always been very humble from the jump, especially when I met you last year at the Bullet Club block party. Uh, So I was curious, when it comes to those fan encounters, I've I've seen some firsthand that are a little nuts. Uh, So which ones come to mind, whether from Thomas Island being on Zoom with them or in person, where you're like, oh, I'm not going to forget this one? Yeah, there's a lot of them that I don't forget. And and it's just... I see their craziness is just their uh, their energy is just so high that I kind of want to match it, you know, and just kind of, you know, vibe up there with them. And, 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 you know, I like that. I like to see people smile. I like to see people happy. And that's, uh, that's always something that has always humbled me. Well, one of the things about being a host of a podcast is not only shooting the breeze with new people, but also friends. So I was curious, since you now have this new um 
platform pretty much to chat with people. Is there one guest you would love to have on that you've yet to, since it's fairly new, that you just love to pick the brain of? It, it could be anybody. It doesn't even have to be just wrestling. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, oh man <laughs> okay there's like there's a few that that come to mind um but there's two in my top um uh <laughs> uh franklin d roosevelt and elon musk okay <laughs> yeah those are the two in my mind those are two that i totally would not have even thought of so what, what's your reasoning for for wanting to have them on and really wanting to know more uh just the Franklin D. Roosevelt because of um you know I'm, I'm in the middle of a book reading of him uh and and just how he uh brought America out of the Great Depression and his leadership and and what he was doing and what he stood for and just how he he uh held himself and Elon Musk because of his his brain is just uh whatever he set his mind to he was, was over, always able to overcome it and just keep going just a never giving up attitude um the reaching the mars <laughs> goal and you know the, where he's taking the the us to the future is just incredible so yeah wow i just <laughs> went out there huh inspirational answers tama look at <laughs> <laughs> i love it <laughs> yeah so, so yeah those guys you know I, there's more but uh you know but those two right now is the, the two that top, that pops into my head i know you asked for one but i always give that extra baby <laughs> it's okay you're not a stranger um one of the things that i really like about the podcast is happy hour that you do every friday and it's really cool seeing the way that everyone gets together and you've posted little snippets about it uh, so i was wondering what is that happy hour drink for you taking the step away from the actual uh, zoom aspect and what would you say that is the the drink yeah <laughs> you say uh, uh uh well you know i i found i've learned about drinking here in this zoom and these happy hours that i need to have drinks that'll uh keep me chill and not get wasted by the by the hour <laughs> so something that i can uh, kind of chill uh, so i've tried white claw and it was okay but then it seems like wine is my uh my coasting <laughs> drink you know any any kind of wine so i've tried merlot i've tried uh pinot noir last weekend and uh uh, Cabernet probably next this Friday, so <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of getting all sophisticated on here, but I, I just know. feel like those those were the drinks that I'm able to still stay coherent and and able to have a a, a respectable conversation with the fans. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Something else that's been really cool to see lately are all of the brand new interviews that New Japan Pro Wrestling have been pushing out, especially with New Japan World. They've been super, uh, just fascinating to me, learning more about some of my favorite wrestlers. Mm -hmm. And you did a recent feature with them where you actually mentioned how when you first got into wrestling, you were so green. And your quote was, I didn't know shit. Um, so I was wondering if you could tell me just a little bit more about that, go in a bit more depth, and just, just how green you truly were and some of the biggest surprises you were met with when coming into this crazy business um you know the, the you know I, okay so i'll go into how green i was going into new japan because i went in without knowing anything about the product i didn't know their psychology their style their anything i, I kind of just went in but i i knew that i was gonna compete and i was gonna work hard so those were the two things i leaned on and everything else just kind of fell in but just knowing how how what the rest like Everybody knew about new, new, if you were a wrestler and you wanted to be a wrestler, like you, you just don't look at American wrestling. You look at you know Japanese wrestling, European wrestling, and Mexican wrestling, and you try to pick. You know you learn. I just wasn't that. I was just so like tunnel vision on American wrestling that I didn't look beyond that. So going into New Japan and the dojo was just eye opening and. And, you know, and thank goodness for uh, Prince David and Machine Gun Carl Anderson and, and Giant Bernard that was able to show me the ropes, you know, in that time. And because there was a lot of things that I was just doing that was just like, everybody was like, this idiot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, and I <laughs> you know, and that, but I was just clueless. And 
And so I see that now with a lot of green guys that they're doing the same moves and the same things that I, it's just not only in the ring, but on the outside and like, especially when like an elder is talking to you and, and you know, like, Hey, you did this, you did this and this, but then the, you know, the young one always turns around and say, but, but, but I was, but, but, but trying, you know, and you, you yeah. just, Hey, shut up. We <laughs> take, it just take it in. And so that I had to learn that quick, and, and no, and that was, is I see that now, and I always laugh about it because you have an understanding now. You, you put yourself in their shoes. So, uh, yeah, th- that was one of the many things. <laughs> but thank goodness, thank goodness, I had those boys, those American and or Irish boys, American boys out there, to uh to to pass on great knowledge. And coming in so green, not necessarily having that knowledge at first, did it take you a moment to actually step into that bad guy role of yours? Because when you go out there, you really are just a total badass. You wouldn't think there's a hint of, you know, no confidence or not knowing anything. So I'd love to know that. Um, It it, it was a lot of building, a lot of trial and errors. And um, I think I've always had a swag in the outside world but I didn't know how to display it inside the wrestling world. And so uh, there's, there's a way to carry yourself and, you know, there's the ways to, um, to shine and ways to pull back. And, and, and just uh, it's, a, it's a building because I went through um, a series of gimmicks that, that I was able to, when I, to take little things from those gimmicks and create who I am today. So, um, yeah, it was a constant learning. So I definitely didn't have the swag I have now, you know. So. <laughs> it must be kind of crazy for you to look at the stuff now, just even if it's a random clip or an interview, it's and then look cringy. back on the first. It's it? so cringy. I can't watch my shit. I can't watch it because I cringe, and I'm like, oh, gosh. You know, and I turn, and I turn. I'll turn it off, and I'll next, next. It's it. That's how I, that's how cringy it is. <laughs> I feel you though, because when I go back and watch my first interviews, they were called like two Q video interviews when I was just interviewing musicians. And it was like two questions, super random, not research, and I just like I'd come into the interview wearing like band t-shirts and jeans, no makeup. I'd rewatch them like, what the, what were you thinking, girl? Like, <laughs> oh, Lord. just don't go back to my YouTube channel. Just don't do it. We <laughs> hey. learn. We yeah, have, we gotta start it's somewhere. a process, you know. You got you got to put your work in, you know. Pay your dues, and and it's a process. Trust the process, huh? Yes. <laughs> Good words of wisdom. <laughs> um, well, one thing I want to end on is the fact that not only do I interview wrestlers like yourself, but also musicians, and you have such great entrance music. But I want to go into a bit of a, a dream world for a second. If you yeah. could have any artist ever write that entrance music for you, who yeah. would you freak out if they ever did it for you? Oh man, if I could take, if I can take Mob Deep, J. Cole, and Lil Jon and have three of them collaborate to create my, my entrance music, that would be the depth of my entrance music. Yeah. I see your eyes light up as you think about it. You're like, ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, you know, I, I, I don't always look at one when you ask, especially you can see that when you ask for who my one inspiration or one guy, I, I always because I, I nitpick. I take here, here and here. I just don't look at one person. I, I think I look for qualities that I like. And then I'm like, bop, 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 and put it all together. And I would make the super, you know, like Power Rangers, that super Power Ranger guy. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's a good thing to have, though, because it's not like we're narrowed down to one thing ourselves. So, of course, mm-hmm. you're going to choose from a few different things. And I'm not going to restrict you. We're good. <laughs> yeah, cool. I like it. <laughs> well, I want to say thank you a ton for hopping on here. I know that you probably have a bunch of stuff to get to, but it's always such a pleasure being able to see you and catching up. So just thank you so, so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. This has been great. I uh, look forward to the next one, okay? Yes, hopefully in person on a beach with some music. Fingers crossed. Hey, you already know. You already know. <laughs> Everyone, cool. this has been the awesome Tama Tonga. I am the interview queen, Alicia Toot. Be sure to check out Thomas Island and check out alishatoot.com for all exclusive interviews and features. We'll see ya.